Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Wolf Packer Show. My name is Ethan McDowell, and I am here with Noah Fleischman. Today has already been a busy day. We have had to push back our recording time about an hour and a half because it has been another just wild day full of transfer portal news. And we are here to talk through all of it, all of the um, good and bad news for the Wolf Pack. And I'm also getting into some basketball talk, some bowl talk, and all of that good stuff. But before we do so, I just want to mention that we are both writers for the Wolfpacker.com. That is NC State's site on the On3 network, the fastest growing recruiting site in the world. So go check it out. Right now, it is only $1 for your first month over at the Wolfpacker.com. So go check it out. That gets you access to, um, you know, premium recruiting scoops, news and analysis for um, football, men's and women's basketball. And we even had wrestling stories up on the website this week. So go check that out. And um, it's all there. It's all $1 to get access to that and our premium message board where, um, you know, if you're wondering who's the staff going to see at, um, you know, midnight tonight once the contact period opens, well, you can know if you paid the $1 at thewolfpacker.com. So go check it out. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll be happy to see you there. All right, Noah, we are going to address the elephant in the room first, right off the top. MJ Morris has officially announced that he is going to enter the transfer portal once it is officially open December 4th. Not the most surprising news. Um, Once he decided to redshirt, uh, I mean, pretty much every bit of intel I received, everything I heard indicated that I it just wasn't likely that he was going to be back with the team for um for his junior season or redshirt sophomore season. Um, he obviously played four games for the pack this year, um, started all four of those, went three and one in those contests, but decided to shut it down and preserve his season of eligibility. Um, Noah, what was your initial reaction to seeing this news? And um, what are just some of your initial thoughts on, um, you know, the quarterback position at NC State moving forward? It's not a surprise. I mean, you kind of touched on it, right? The second he redshirted and shut it down for this year, it was really hard to imagine him being able to walk back to the locker room in 2024 and, and you know, be that guy again in the spring and, and going into the fall. So it's not that much of a surprise to see him go in the portal. It is what it is. Portal opens officially Monday. He got out of there in front of it saying, I'm going in. So any coaches that are, you know, interested are going to be ready to go to talk to him Monday, probably beforehand now that he's officially going in. It's, you know, an unspoken thing. They're not supposed to do it, but coaches around the country reach out to guys in the portal that aren't in the portal and things like that all the time. So that that's not a surprise. Um, and he's moving on. And you know what? If that's what he thinks is best for his career, then then that's what you got to deal with and move on. And he's moving on. NC State will move on. And, you know, everyone could be happy at the end of the day, depending on how things work out. Um, but, yeah, the portal is going to be NC State's friend this year at quarterback position, obviously now needing – a starter for next year and possibly a backup too, depending on how NC state really weighs your options here with, with what Cedric Bailey can do as a true freshman coming in or Lex Thomas or something like that on the roster already. Um, but most likely I think two quarterbacks would not be surprised coming through the portal. And guess what? It's an easy thing to market to a transfer portal quarterback. you got a good offense. Kevin Concepcion will make any quarterback look good. Get them ball and go Jonathan Taylor and maybe Terrell Anderson. They'll be on, on campus next year, and, and we'll be able to be a quarterback's friend. Um, and plus, whoever else NC State can get out of the portal. I mean, they can build this offense really, really nice. Um, and plus, the second part, the quarterback walks in, and there's no incumbent starting quarterback to beat out for the job. I think that that's a little enticing. You can uh, have an idea and, and just jump in and, and come into a competition maybe with two guys, but there's, it's not like you got to come in and, and beat out an MJ Morris for the job. He's gone. The job is wide open in spring ball. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, you, you said it perfectly. Um, you're going to come in, you're going to take over this offense that with one of the more creative play callers in the country, especially, you know, throw out the first half of the season at this point, because what, what, what we have watched NC state do over the final you know quarter of their season has shown why Robert and I was the hired offensive coordinator here why um, people were so excited about his creative offense. It, it, it shows. It showed in the MJ's last couple starts, and it showed in, um, you know, Brennan Armstrong's last few um, last few outings there, um, going 3-0 back in his starting role. So it, it should be an attractive destination. And to be honest, I've heard buzz that it is 
an attractive destination. We'll, we'll see how how it goes once you know the portal opens. Once you know NC State can actually reach out to quarterbacks, because unless you're a graduate transfer, of course, right now they cannot. Even if um, like you said, like M- teams cannot reach out to MJ Morris right now. Does it happen? Yes. Yes. T- tampering is any any coach will tell you tampering is a huge issue right now. Um, but you know, so now you have to look at it. You have to look at the group of quarterbacks available. And um, Noah, I, I just want to go through a few names in the transfer portal, and I want to get your initial thoughts on if they would be a good fit for NC State. Does that sound good? Let's do it. All right. Let's start with Grayson McCall, Coastal Carolina QB, put up video game numbers. He's from, um, I believe, the Charlotte area. He's definitely a North Carolina kid. And, um, you know, spent last year with former – uh, off NC State offensive pointer Tim Beck as his head coach, um, and now he is in the portal for his final year of eligibility. Noah, when I say Grayson McCall, you think what? I think good quarterback, not great quarterback. I think definitely a really good quarterback. Um, three times Sun Belt uh, Player of the Year, not offensive player, player of the year in the Sun Belt Conference in his first three years there. Um, Aries. He had three years of winning it. The first time anyone's won that award three times in a row in the Sun Belt Conference. He's a guy from North Carolina. You talk about his numbers. You know, he didn't play. He played a little bit this year. He was hurt. Um, he got a concussion and missed the last month of the year. Um, but overall, he's thrown for 10,000 yards with 88 touchdowns and only 14 interceptions. But this year, he had his career most six interceptions in Tim Beck's offense at Coastal Carolina. He's good. If he comes to NC State, I think he can fit. In the system, he's a really talented quarterback, but I don't know if he's, you know, at that elite, elite level that some that some NC State fans might want to see out of the portal. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you there. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see how expectations versus reality reflect in the portal. Because last year was in a unique year, right? You brought in an eye and you had that um unique um connection with Brennan Armstrong back from their days at UVA. So, you know, that was a you know, kind of a slam dunk at the time. He was like the fourth best transfer portal guy available or quarterback available. So it's going to be interesting to see how that changes now that, uh, you know, unless something unexpected happens, there's not going to be any coaching hires with, um, you know, links there. Another name I wanted to throw out, Oregon State quarterback DJ Uyunglele. Familiar name for Wolfpack fans. Of course, he was the Clemson signal caller for all those years. Um, in my opinion, was a little bit scapegoated at Clemson. And then he leaves Oregon State and he throws for 2,638 yards, 21 touchdowns, and seven interceptions this year. And today, he hops back in the portal. Um, you know, it's going to be his last year. I think NFL is also a possibility for DJ. Um, you know, and he's a West Coast guy, so maybe he's inclined to stay on the West Coast. But if he wanted to come back to the ACC, maybe get some revenge on his old team, what would be your reaction to um, a potential DJ comes back to the ACC storyline, Noah? I think it'd be a slam dunk get if they could get him to come back for one more year. I know he's weighing his options right now. He could go pro and just say, I'm done with college football as a whole. Um, that's an option that he has on the table. Um, and, you know, as you said, it's unclear to see leave the West Coast and come back East again. Don't know. His brother does play at Oregon. Oregon's going to need a quarterback if Bo Nix goes to the NFL draft. So there's plenty of options here, you know, in, in what they want to do. Um, but if NC State could swing it, that'd be a great one-year rental to have. You know, I think he would be have this similar hype that Brennan had coming into the year of being that yeah. guy. And I think, you know, it'd be a question of does it pan out? Or not, Brennan eventually got to that level by the end of the year. Um, and we'll see if if they can get it. But that one's definitely a swing for the fences and hope he says yes. But I, I'm not sure if they could land. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it, he would be the most um, realistic option in the portal. But I wanted to throw his name out there. Speaking of probably unrealistic, I want to talk about Will Howard, the Kansas State signal caller. Um, he's probably the most in-demand transfer portal quarterback right now, at least one of them. And, um, you know, this season, he's 6'5", 242-pound signal caller. And um, he has 2,643 passing yards, 24 touchdowns, and 10 picks so far this season. Um, Noah, what would be your reaction to 
in my opinion, if um, DJ was a slam dunk, this is like a 360 windmill. But what 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 do you think about um, an idea of potentially Will Howard coming to NC State? Yeah, Will Howard, I think, would be a, a grand slam, you know, land if they could get him. I don't know. I don't I don't know how likely that would be. You know, he's a guy, game changer, kind of quarterback. Um, but at this point, NC State might not be where he wants to end up. The ACC might not be where he wants to end up. You know, some of these guys that are transferring from the Big Ten, Big 12, wind up in the SEC. We'll see what happens. But if they could swing it, I think NC State fans would be very excited. And I, I don't know if I want to speak too soon, but if Will Howard were to come to NC State, you could make an argument that NC State would be in the 12-team playoff next year. Yeah, I, I think that's accurate. Right now he is the number one overall player in the transfer portal. So – um, you know, Riley Leonard, someone on there, I'm not even going to ask about him because it seems pretty, pretty assuredly like he's headed for, um, for Notre Dame. I mean, if you go and look at the reports around about that, it looks like he's, uh, he's destined for, um, you know, South Bend over there. Um, I'll give you one more name before we wrap up. And it's, um, it, it's kind of, it's kind of a different one. Matthew, Sluka, I don't even know if that's how you pronounce his last name. I apologize if um if I'm getting it wrong, but he is a very interesting quarterback. He is um he plays for Holy Cross, and um you know helped really build up that program and um has put up some really really impressive numbers there as well. Uh, he's kind of an unknown. I know there's been like maybe a little buzz that he could stay in the Northeast, but uh. I would be interested to see if NC State gets involved there. Noah, if they brought in, um, you know, the FCS transfer, what would you think of that? It's not the the fancy transfer that, you know, some of these other names we've already talked about would be, but he is a proven commodity. You know, he's a two-time finalist for the Walter Payton Award, which is the FCS version of the Heisman. He's, you know, he was the Offensive Player of the Year in his conference this year. He's a team MVP last year for Holy Cross. Holy Cross is a pretty decent FCS program. It's not the North Dakota States or, or James Madison or anything like that. But when you look at his numbers this year, 1,700 passing yards, 20 touchdowns to five interceptions, pretty good ratio. And of those five picks, three came in and lost to Harvard. So really, you take that game out. He had two picks the rest of the outside of that one game in the middle of the season. He also ran for 1,243 yards with nine touchdowns. This guy is a the true dual threat quarterback. And he would thrive, I think, in a Robert and I offense. You saw what Brendan Armstrong did, put up four, 544 yards on the ground, which was is an NC State single-season record for a quarterback. They're bringing a guy that can run for 1,200 yards. Put that with, with Kevin Concepcion. I think the misdirection and everything that NC State runs would fit well with a guy like that. It's not the flashiest transfer, but it may be one of the more effective ones if, if, if he's on their radar. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I'd actually be a huge fan if they were able to bring him in. I think he'd be an underrated guy who come in here and thrive. Uh, there's really no one right now in the portal that has emerged that has like a clear NC State connection or a clear a connection to the staff. Um, it's something to keep an eye on, something to monitor going forward. But um, for now, we are in wait and see mode. I'm going to post a um, quarterback hot board later today on the Wolfpacker.com. Even more reason to go, you know, check it out and uh, – just read some more about potential options that they could bring in. Um, Noah, before we move on from the portal, I want to go through all the, the other 11 players who have already <laughs> declared their um, intention to leave the Wolfpack this season. Um, in the minutes after MJ announced his decision earlier today, um, NC State starting nose tackle CJ Clark also entered as a graduate transfer. Um, you know, he started every game this year. He has been a fixture in NC State's defensive line for um, you know five seasons now. Just really productive player. Noah, what was your reaction to seeing this news? And um, just kind of what's your gut feeling right now about um, nose tackle at NC State? Nose tackle is an interesting spot. I mean, CJ Clark, you know, he's played well. He started a lot two of the last three years, and he's played really well, you know, in, in his spot. But a guy that played really well when CJ Clark needed a break was Brandon Cleveland. And I think that's someone to be really high on. I can see him starting next year um, at that spot. Um, but I definitely think NC State more than likely hits the portal, looks for a defensive tackle to bring in, put him there, and and try to make him work with Brandon Cleveland. 
Um, it's an interesting one. I don't think we saw this portal coming. Sometimes you can kind of, you know, get an idea. All right, this guy's probably going to transfer. He's not playing well or not playing much. CJ Clark was playing well and playing a lot. But, you know, it's time to hit the portal as a grad transfer for one more year. So, interesting. We did think he may have been a candidate to go to the NFL. Still on the table probably. Um, but, you know, did not see a portal, you know, out of him. Yeah, now it was a little bit of a surprise, but also – I think Brandon Cleveland would have been challenging for a lot of his snaps next year. I, I think he's a really good player, someone who moved from into nose tackle during the offseason, um, put on some weight to do so, and uh, really kind of fit into that role seamlessly. He has three sacks and two forced fumbles on the year. So it it's a tough loss whenever you le- lose like a senior leader as good as C.J. Clark with um, that many years of proven production. But – NC State is in position to slot Cleveland in there, who I think can be a really, really good player for a few years at NC State. All right, next up, we'll go in um, reverse chronological order here. Jakeen Harris, um, you know, graduate student safety, um, been here for a while, but, um, you know, missed pretty much the entire season after um, suffering a season-ending injury early on. And um, he's someone where, you know, he's a – very reliable, um, you know, sure tackling, uh, you know, good in pass coverage safety, who um, is also like just one of the re- really, really, really smart players in the secondary. He w- he played a big role in just, you know, helping the his backups in the secondary progress throughout this season. Um, he's decided to enter the portal. Noah, um, we found out about that uh, late last night. What was your reaction? That one, it's interesting because he did miss most of the year. Right, he played in the first game and got hurt. NC State managed its safeties pretty well throughout the year, and they were they got really shorthanded at, at times. Um, I think maybe it's a thing where he sees playing time next year might not be what it could have been if he stayed healthy, and, and so he hit the portal and and leave. But he, you know, he was a good, you know, interesting part of his team because he was like a player coach throughout the year, helping out the safeties as kind of like a almost a a GA, but not a GA. He's still on the team, but you know, taking that role a little bit. Um, so I think, you know what, he may have learned from that and it's been a good thing, right? But test, test out the water, see what else is out there and, and move, move forward. All right. And, um, I realize we're already at like 17 and a half minutes on this pod. So we'll move through the rest of these guys, but, um, said C bro, he, um, played very limited snaps this year, um, was a fixture on special teams, but did not really play that much otherwise. Um, Noah, any thoughts on um, Seth's departure? Not really. It just means that NC State's going to have to hit the hit the portal for a tight end probably at this point. You're losing Trent Penix already. You lose a depth guy like that. I, I definitely think tight end is a, a point of need at this point. Yeah, and um, they're bringing in someone on a visit uh, next week. Um, go check out thewolfpacker.com if you want to know who that is. But um, he's someone who could potentially fill that role for next year because obviously, you know, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about Chris Tootle um, in a second here, but uh, he's gone too. Trent Penix is out of eligibility. You need tight ends after this year. Um, Porter Rooks, he played meaningful snaps all season long in the slot at the flex Y position, and um, he's decided to hit the portal. Um, you know, he's a former big time recruit. I don't think ever really reached the heights that, uh, you know, were attached with that label, but he was still a productive, solid receiver for his entire Wolfpack career. Um, Noah, any thoughts on Porter Rooks' departure? He was, you know, he was used a little bit here and there. Obviously, his production went down the last two seasons, so it's not a surprise to see him hit the portal. I mean, some of these guys, they only have a couple years left, one to two years of eligibility, and it's kind of one of those things where you want to go out there and play a lot. And and past the playing time, this year wasn't wasn't great. Then you look at who's coming in next year as a freshman and maybe look around the room and say, if I'm not going to play much, end up somewhere else. Could have been the thinking here with, with the, the elite freshmen that are coming in behind him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cornerback Nate Evans, another guy you know, didn't play much this year. Um, had a little bit, played a few snaps in a reserve role last year, but um, didn't really see the field um, this season. Um, Noah, just your thoughts on Nate Evans. Similar thing. Didn't see the field. Maybe it didn't work out where they how he thought. You know, his first couple of years at NC State were going to work out. So hit the portal and, and find a new new home. It's what a lot of these guys are going to be, right? Um, a lot of people 
don't play a lot or didn't have the kind of year they wanted, going to hit the portal and find something new. And I think that's what we're seeing with a lot of these guys that went in early. Now we're starting to see some of the more impactful transfers, but they were really a couple, you know, with just guys that weren't happy maybe or weren't happy with playing time that are going to go look for more. Yeah, and um, the next guy, you know, kind of similar story, Daywan Thompson. He's someone who I personally was a little uh, bummed about. I thought he was a really good prospect coming out of high school, you know, really hard-hitting linebacker. Needed to bulk up, but, um, you know, he was a – what I, I thought he had a really, really high ceiling as a player. Um, but, Noah, your thoughts on him, but also just, like, how does this reflect the linebacker room, in your opinion? I think it's, you're going to have to find a linebacker to death, right? Peyton Wilson leaves. Obviously, that's a big, big, big hole to leave wide open on this linebacker room. Um, it tells me they're probably, you know, you're losing young guys, which isn't good, right? Maybe he wasn't going to play next year, but in a couple of years, you you have you hope that the development. Um, so that's going to have to, you know, make them recruit there. But plus, they're probably, you know, we're talking about portal taking away. They're probably going to need a portal linebacker coming in to fill Peyton Wilson's hole this year. Um, I just don't know if there's a guy that can step up and, you know, have the amount of impact. I don't think anybody can have the amount of impact Peyton Wilson had this year, even if you go to the portal and grab somebody. But I definitely think grabbing another experienced linebacker would help make that ease, that transition a little bit more easier rather than throwing somebody in that didn't play much this year or, or something like that. Yeah, a guy to keep an eye on there is um, junior college linebacker Keaton Thomas. He's someone who um, picked up an offer from NC State recently, and the talks are really ramping up there. Um, I could see them bringing him in as someone to um, you know compete for a starting job. He leads all junior college players in tackles per game with over 11. So he's someone to keep an eye on without a doubt out of Northeast Mississippi Community College. All right, and then moving on to the next player, we've got running back Jordan Houston. I mean, he was, you know, reliable running back for um, a lot of years at NC State. He decided to redshirt. We've already kind of talked about him, so we don't really need to go in-depth there, Noah. But um, when you couple that with Michael Allen, another running back who's decided to transfer, um, you're left with a relatively thin running back room um, with a lot of youth. You have, you know, are, are, are you counting on Kendrick Raphael to be your full-time starter as a true sophomore? Sure, looks like he has the ability to do that. Is that what the staff's plan is? We'll see. Noah, um, your thoughts on where the transfers leave NC State's running back room looking towards 2024? I think it leaves it in a decent spot, right? You talk about Kendrick Raphael could be the guy. He got to be the workhorse a little bit down the stretch, um, you know, with injuries and things like that. I do think, though, this leaves State in a possibility of going to find a grad transfer running back, and here's why. I think Kendrick Raphael really has the potential to be the number one running back in that room but maybe not next year. I think he'll still be a solid number two and, and get a lot of run. Um, but if they want to go find a game-changing running back, I think there will be some of the portal with one or two years of eligibility um, and go there and grab them. And then you can tandem those two together and, and let them have some fun after losing, you know, Michael Allen and Jordan Houston. Yeah. And uh, then we have, I'll go, I'll group in. So we get the last three guys here, Christopher Tootle, Anthony Smith, and Darius Edmondson. First, Tootle, um, tight end who played a, a decent amount of snaps, but um, he didn't get a catch this year. He used a lot in a blocking role. Um, you know, first off, I just want to say, like, one of the best interviews ever, just one of the nicest guys on um, on that Wolfpack roster, really enjoyed chance to get to know him over the past couple of years. But um, your, your, th your thoughts on um, Chris Tootle's departure, Noah? A guy that you know they used him before didn't really get much action this year on even know with the ball in his hand did not record a catch. I think it was kind of one of those things where it sucks to lose a guy like that. But you know what? If he, if you don't get any catch in a whole year, I think you'd be pretty disappointed with how things are going. So yeah, and and he's a guy he was at NC State for um, five years. You know. It's a full, more than a full Wolfpack career, and now he's going to go and try to find some um, opportunities elsewhere with more playing time. Um, kind of in a similar vein, Anthony Smith, he's someone who the coaches really liked, especially with the way he worked this offseason, earned his way back from scout team all the way up into um, 
you know, a major spot in the wide outside wide receiver rotation. He's in a, like a blazing fast, like four, three type of guy, but um, just never really fully put it together, but he's still young. He's got um a couple years of eligibility left. So no, what, what do you think about, um you know, Anthony Smith and his decision to depart? It was an interesting one. He was getting a run on the offense toward the end of the year. He was a really good special teams player for NC state. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to to kind of put that one in the words. Obviously, he didn't start the year too hot. Was toward the bottom of the depth chart. Worked his way all the way up, and Dave Dorn kept raving about him for a few weeks toward the end of the year. Um, but looks like he's off to to find a new home. And MJ Morris weighed in on it and said, you know, he said he's got SEC speed and talent. So we'll see if if that comes to to, to fruition. When she does have the the speed, you know, to basically go anywhere. It's just a matter of you know putting everything together. Yeah. And all right, Noah, wrap us up. Darius Edmondson, corner, nickel, defensive back. Um, he decided to, you know, um, to hit the portal this year as well. Yeah, that was a mid-year transfer. He wasn't playing a whole lot. And, you know, the, the nickel corner room has got a lot of depth and maybe just saw that there wasn't much playing time there. So he hit the portal in the middle of the year, which is a little bit different than these guys at the end of the year that stick out the whole season and then, and then realize. So there may be more to the story there, but. You know, he, he decided to depart in the middle of the season. Got it. All right. Well, there's the rundown. It's 12 guys right now have hit the portal for the pack. So I'll be honest, I don't think it's done yet. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot more players hit the portal over the next um over the next week or two. But um, you know, it's something to watch out for. This is college football now. It, it, it hurts now. It stings to see a guy like C.J. Clark, a guy like M.J. Morris depart. But it's going to feel great when you bring in the promising, you know, player from X group of five school who um, is going to come in and slot into a starting role like Robert Kennedy did this year. Or your high potential wide receiver like Dakari Collins coming in for, you know, three years. It, it, it's it's discouraging at times, but it's going to be exciting. It's going to be an exciting time to be following Wolfpack recruiting. And, you know, we'll talk more about that in the weeks to come. It's all we're talking about on the Wolfpacker.com. So go check it out again. And before we get into, um, you know, a little bit of bowl talk, a little bit of basketball talk, I wanted to say a quick thank you to our sponsor, Game Time. Game Time is a ticket buying and selling marketplace where you can look for you know, tickets to see a hockey game, basketball game, a concert, comedy show, pretty much whatever you're looking for, Game Time has it. And they have tickets up up until kickoff, puck drop, whatever you're looking for, they've got it. Um, so go check Game Time out. You can find it on the App Store, any App Store. Just search up Game Time. Or you can find it on your web browser at gametime.co. That's gametime.co, not .com. Um, and when you check it out, my favorite thing about that by far is that you can see exactly the view from your seat. Um, right now I'm looking at tickets for um, tonight's Islanders at Hurricanes game. Right now you can go for $22 right now. That, that's a pretty great deal. And um, it shows you, I'll show up for show for those watching on YouTube. You can see exactly where you would be sitting right there on the app. Very useful. Cuts a step out of the ticket buying process. And um, they have the best deals right at the top. So Go check it out, and if you do, use code WOLFPACK. That's all caps WOLFPACK for $20 off your first purchase. All right, Noah, right before we hopped on this podcast, I hadn't gotten eaten so far today, so I ate a Pop-Tart. And I chose a Pop-Tart for a very obvious reason because it sure looks like, it sure looks like if you look at all the projections nationwide that NC State is headed to the Pop-Tarts Bowl. That's the overwhelming favorite right now. We'll see how things change um, and all that. No, Noah, you've been our um, bowl forecaster for the past couple weeks. I know you have your ear to the ground looking for that sort of stuff. Um, give, give us the latest. What, kind of, what are you hearing? What are you thinking about NC State's bowl prospects? Definitely seems like the Pop-Tarts Bowl is going to become a reality. Orlando, late December, it's going to be warm. It's going to be fun. There's an edible mascot involved. I don't think you can ask for anything better than that, right? You know, of all the bold projections I've seen this week, it seems like NC State's got to, you know, they're headed to the pop Tarts pool. Nothing official yet until Sunday when it becomes announced. But 
most likely more than not is going to be the Pop Tarts Bowl against a Big 12 opponent. The opponent has I've seen three this week. West Virginia, Oklahoma State, or Kansas State. If you want the 10th win and you're an NC State fan, hope for Kansas State. They've got four guys, four key players already, you know, off, you know, leaving team, whether it's, you know, in the portal and things like that, including their quarterback, Will Howard, gone. So you want to win 10 games. That's not a bad team to play. Um, we'll, we'll see. There's also some bowls that have been projected to the Gator Bowl recently, R- Relia Quest, which is formerly the Outback Bowl, which will be a cool one, New Year's Day in Tampa, um, but not as likely. I definitely think Pop Tarts Bowl. At this point, is if you had asked me, I think that's where they're going. Um, which I've been a big proponent of the Pop Tarts Bowl. You think you know? I've been I've been talking about the past like month and a half, ever since NC State, you know, really looked likely of playing a Tier One Bowl. And uh, we'll see what happens. But an edible mascot on the field, Peyton Wilson's last game could be eating a pop, a massive Pop Tart on the field. I, wh- wh- where could you go wrong? Yeah, there's no, no better ending to um, a storied All-American Defensive Player of the Year um, legacy than just absolutely chowing down on a giant Pop-Tart. <laughs> um, all right, uh, before we wrap up today's show, we I both wanted to just give me and Noah an opportunity to give our respective soliloquies on the basketball season so far. Um, for those following along on the Wolfpacker.com, um, I'm mainly following the women's team right now, and Noah is following the men's team. Um Right now, they're kind of trending in opposite directions. Um, Noah, why don't you start us off? Um, Just give listeners your thoughts on the um, basketball non-conference slate so far. Interesting. They started off 4-0, looking good. They didn't, you know, their biggest test was Vanderbilt at the time in Las Vegas, um, which was a good win over an SEC program that's, you know, middle of the pack toward the bottom, but still a good win. and then they played BYU in the uh, Vegas Showdown Championship game, which things did not go well in the second half. BYU shot 70% from the field in the second half of that game, knocked down almost every three. felt like they took. They hit, I think, 13, 14 threes in the game, a lot of threes. Um, four ejections highlighted that game, including Kevin Keats, KJ Keats, uh, Jaden Taylor, and uh, Ben Middlebrooks. Two of them walked on the court. At the media timeout during a fight, it was kind of an interesting Way to get an ejection. Jaden Taylor got two technicals, and then Kevin Keats got two technicals, I believe, as well, when he was asking about Jaden Ta- J- Taylor's technicals. Um, so that happened that when they lost. Then they come back in the ACC SEC Challenge this week again at Ole Miss, and they lost by 20. So things are not trending well right now in the last two games for the men's team. Um, their last three halves of basketball have not been pretty, um, and we'll see if they can get that fixed before they play at Boston College on Saturday to open ACC play. It's kind of interesting. ACC is having a big ACC weekend early December, and then back to non-conference until January. So we'll see what happens. But they want to kind of snap this streak and, you know, doing it on the road in ACC conference play, starting off conference play 1-0, I think will be important. And they're going to Boston College, which should be a winnable game for them, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, and – um. Things are going a little differently on um, on the women's side of things. The women's Wolfpack basketball team is ranked number five in the country. Uh, the season was, you know, it filled, filled with a lot of mystery. With um, you know, we're bringing in four new freshmen and uh, and um, two transfers as well. You don't really know how um, it's all going to blend together. And man, I think it's ex- exceeded anyone's expectations for this year. Um, they climbed from unranked all the way to that fifth spot in the AP poll. And um, they look good right now. They're playing at a really high level. Sanaya Rivers and, and Isaiah James both look like players who could be, um, you know, all ACC caliber players, um, maybe even all American at the rate they're going. Because, man, they have been really impressed. They are one of, if not the best guard duo in the ACC right now. Um, NC State is 8 0. Two of those wins are over top three teams. They have maybe the best resume of anyone in women's college basketball right now. And um, yeah, yeah, they're 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 doing great right now. They just picked up a um, SEC ACC challenge win last night. Um, kind of a you know up and down game for for the team because they they built as many as much of us as a twenty six point lead in the fourth quarter, and then um, Vanderbilt brought it all the way back and cut it to eight with a little over a minute to go. So um, 
you know, they, they weren't happy about that. They made that very clear in the press conference. Sonia Rivers called it embarrassing. Um, you know, that it, it was very clear that they recognized that that just wasn't going to fly. And I think they'll, you know, bounce back from that quite fine. But, you know, um, it's better to win, fr- learn from a win than a loss, right? So the pack remains undefeated. They're 8-0. Um, you know, Westmore, you know, continues to say there's still a lot they need to improve on, but they are playing at a really high level right now. If you haven't gotten out to a game at Reynolds yet, um, get out there. You know, still that their win over UConn was um, maybe the loudest basketball game I've ever been to. It was just ridiculous. So yeah, um, we'll be there. We'll be covering both basketball teams throughout the season, throughout silly season in football as well. We'll have you know co- coaching room coaching rumors, transfer portal news, signing day coverage. It is a busy, busy time for thewolfpacker.com, and we have so much fun stuff going up on the website daily. So go check it out, and um, thank you all for listening to this podcast. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, Please like, subscribe on whatever platform you're listening or watching us on. Um, Leave a comment. And um, yeah, we'll um, we'll be back next week to you know continue to discuss all the latest news. If there's an emergency podcast, we'll we'll be back sooner. Who knows this time of year? But um, we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks again for listening, and have a good week.